This can actually be done with just vanilla HTML5. Hello everybody, today we're going to take a look at the data list tag in HTML5 and how we can with it create a uh, autocomplete input text element. So let's get started. Here I have just a simple text element with just a label and let's say I, I just want the color as some text here and uh, well I can type in red and that's going to be fine. I can type in blue and that's also fine but what, I, what if I want to actually uh, have it automatically be completed for me? So there are many instances where we actually need something like this, a, a text box where you can type something in and down below in a drop down list get some suggestions that you can click on and it will automatically complete the whole uh, word for you or the whole sentence. Well, you can actually do this with vanilla HTML5. The way to do it is actually pretty simple. First things first, here we have the input and it's a type text and it has a name. That's very, very basic and straightforward, nothing fancy here. After it, or really wherever else, we have to define a data list. So a data list element is something that has been added to HTML5. And to use it, first we have to give it an ID. So I'm gonna give it, let's say ID colors. And this data list element should simply include some option elements, similarly to how the select uh, element works. So here we have just option. And inside the value uh, attribute of the option is what's gonna be autocompleted. So for example, I can add in here, let's say blue, and then I can add in uh, red, why not? And now, well, if I refresh the page, I won't get the autocomplete here simply because I also have to link this data list to the input. When I said that you can really add it anywhere, I really meant it because uh, the input and the data list is linked through the list attribute. So there's a list attribute on the input that you can add in here. And what you can say here is colors, which is the ID of the data list. Okay, and now if I try to refresh this, if I click on here, I'm gonna actually get those suggestions. And here I can say just blue or simply red. Now the nice thing about it is of course you can actually type in uh, something beforehand and only then autocomplete, unlike a select uh, dropdown. So I added here a few more options. And as you can see, if I type in white, I'm gonna get titanium white, uh, even though it doesn't start with that word, it's gonna uh, actually search for it in every single value. And uh, moreover, it's actually gonna search for it case insensitive. So it doesn't really care about the casing because usually when you type in here uh, in, a, in an autocomplete, you don't really want uh, it to be case sensitive. A few important things to note here is if you have the same value twice in this section, it's gonna appear twice here as well. So even if I white, I type in white here, I'm gonna get this twice, even though it's the same exact value. So that's one thing. And another thing is that if you have way too many options, so if I, uh, let's say I add in here a few more, something like that. Well, it's gonna show all of them and you're gonna have to scroll between them, even though well, right now it's all the same uh, value, but suppose that they are different. In that case, it does actually work for whatever resolution you're uh, using. All right, you say, but why is it not used? Like almost every single time we have to implement a uh, an autocomplete, a uh, drop down in which you can actually type in, you're usually gonna use some uh, library that makes use of JavaScript, of some JavaScript. And it's because there are a few downsides. One of them is that this only exists in HTML5. So if you're using, uh, if your clients are using a different browser that might be outdated, say it's using HTML4 or something, then it's not gonna be supported. So you're gonna have to provide polyfills for that. Okay, that's fine, it's not really, a big issue. But the biggest issue that I think is that these options are actually static. You know, if you have, for example, uh, to autocomplete from a table that has uh, something like thousands of rows, you shouldn't actually use this because populating this data list with thousands and thousands of options is gonna bloat the HTML that you have to send to the user and it's gonna be way too much. 
Okay, so this is these are all, only sort of like suggestions. It shouldn't serve as a search box where you can just type in something and it's going to automatically uh, search and auto complete it for you. So in that case, I really do suggest you just you just use um, some other library or something that you, impl you implement yourself. But whenever you're typing, it should actually do a request to the uh, back end and get back a couple results, not load the whole database inside your HTML. That's really, really bad. And I guess the third issue is that it's not customizable. It is the way the browsers are implementing it and that's basically it. So here I am in Google Chrome and it looks like this and it's a black box down here probably because of my uh, theme that I'm using. So that's you cannot change it and it is the same size even though even if I zoom in far enough it's going to be the same size which is a bit strange um, but you cannot really customize it. Actually the fourth downside for this uh, data list option is that you cannot actually force the user to, se to have to select an option from the drop down list. So if I have here let's say if I type in green right and I leave it on and say I have a submit button somewhere, it's gonna actually be sent as the green word. Nobody is going to clear the input unless you actually do some custom JavaScript uh, to force me to select like, let's say sap green because green doesn't exist in this dropdown. And most libraries that actually have a dropdown like this do allow you to do such a thing and many people actually use it this way. All right, so where is this useful then? Well. There are a couple uses for it. Definitely when you have a search box and you want to just sort of suggest the top 10, uh, let's say, tags that are searched for, that's, that's a great way to use this because while some people might select them, some others might just search for their own tags, that's fine. So this really works for something like tags or categories that uh, could be dynamic, you know, they could be created on the fly if you want somebody to just create it category on the fly, they just type it in. If they want to use something that already exists, they just select it from the suggestions. That's perfectly fine. For enums, it doesn't work that way because, well, you cannot add to the enums, so you might as well just have a select then a data list. And uh, really, that's about it. And that's about it. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Again, the source code for this video can be found on our website, link down in the description below. Take care. Bye.